Okay, so we're still talking in box E here of unit three and four. We're looking at applications of the dot product and the cross product. And the next application that we want to consider is how you calculate the volume of what's called a parallel pipette. Now, a parallel pipette is basically taking our parallelogram and extending it into three dimensions. Um, we've got some kind of a parallelogram for a base. Um, and the opposite faces, so the, the faces that make up the sides, have to be parallelograms as well. So let's just say opposite faces are congruent, i.e. same size and shape, parallelograms. So this is basically just a complicated way of saying we've got, um, we could have a cube, we could have a rectangular prism, we could have this thing that we have here which is kind of a rectangular prism that's sort of been tilted over a little bit. Um, as long as the base and the top here are parallel and all of the sides, opposite sides are parallel to each other, you've got a parallel pipette. So it's sort of a generic three-dimensional um, six-sided shape where all the sides are parallelograms. And for our purposes, what is defining this parallel pipette are these three edges, which are defined by three vectors, A, B, and C. So I'll just put that in red here. Edges are defined by vectors. In this case. Just like uh, when we did the parallelogram, we had the two, uh, two sides of our parallelogram were defined by vectors. And of course, these three vectors all have to be tail to tail to tail, just like in our parallelogram example. And what we want to do is we want to calculate the volume of this shape here. Well, if you think back to grade nine, how did you find the volume of something that was three-dimensional? Yeah, or the area of the base times the height. So let's do that. Area of base times the height. Uh, what shape is our base here? Parallelogram, right? So how do we find the area of this parallelogram? Well, we've got two sides here defined by vectors. This is what we did last day. So we know that the area there is going to be the magnitude of the cross product of the two vectors that define our two edges. So we want the magnitude of, in this case, B cross C. Okay. Or we could have done C cross B. It doesn't really matter about the order because we're taking the magnitude there. So we can get the area of the base. Next thing we want is we want to get the height of this thing. Now that's going to be a little bit trickier. How do we find the height? Well, the height we want has got to be perpendicular to the base. So what we're going to define is we're going to define what's called the normal. Okay? And I'll just call this N here. The normal is a vector that is perpendicular to, in this case, the base. So we'll just say N normal um, perpendicular to the base. Okay. And it would be a vector in this case. So if we want to find a vector that is perpendicular to our base, well, our base is defined by these two vectors, B and C. So how can we find a vector that is perpendicular to B and C? we take the cross product B cross C. So we can use B cross C to get this normal vector. Okay. The height H is going to be, in a sense, it's defined by 
we, we've got this vector A that sort of goes on an angle here that tells us how far our, um, our parallel pipette goes up. What the height is here is it's the component of A that is perpendicular to the base. So how can I write this here? Height is component of that A vector that is, again, perpendicular to the base. Well, how can I figure out what component of A, what the component of A is that is perpendicular to the space? Well, I can do a projection. If I do the projection of vector A onto this normal that I have, the normal, doing that projection will pick out the direction perpendicular from the normal, and it'll also give us the magnitude of that, uh, that component perpendicular. So I want to do the projection, I want the magnitude of the projection of A onto this normal vector. Okay, so this is, this is my height. Well, our normal, we just calculated by doing A cross, uh, B cross C. So let's put that in. Projection of A onto this vector B cross C. Okay. Now, what was our formula for doing a um, projection here? Well, the magnitude of a projection is just the magnitude of the dot product divided by the magnitude of the vector that we're projecting onto. So this becomes the dot product A dot B cross C divided by the magnitude of B cross C. this magnitude up top. Okay. So that's how we could calculate our height. A dot B cross C over the magnitude of B cross C. Now if we put all of this stuff together, our volume is going to be the area of our base, which is the magnitude of B cross C, times our height here, which is the magnitude of A dotted with B cross C, divided by magnitude of B cross C. Of course, this and this just cancel out, and we're left with the volume is the magnitude of A dot B cross C. A relatively simple formula from all of that mess that we did here. Okay? So, if your parallel pipette is defined by three vectors, take the cross product of two of them, take the dot product of that with the third, take the magnitude of that, and that gives you your volume. And the order that you do these in doesn't matter, okay, because the volume is going to be the same whether you use A and B to define your base and C to define your height, or whether you use A and C to define your base and B to define your height. So the order that you do these vectors any of this stuff in doesn't matter. So let's just say order of vectors doesn't matter. And because we're taking the magnitude at the end, the magnitude sort of wa washes out all of the direction information anyways. Okay. So this is the formula that you need to know. Even if you, you, you didn't follow the entire derivation, if you know this formula, you can always calculate the volume. So let's take an example here. Find the volume of the parallel pipette defined by these three vectors. U is 1, 4, 3, V is 2, 5, 6, W is 1, 2, 7. Okay. And as I just said, the order that I put these in doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether U and V define the base, or V and W define the base, or 
um, u and w to find the base. So I'm just going to stick these into my formula in the order that they appear. I'm going to do u dot v cross w, take the magnitude, and that's going to give me my volume. And then let's uh, just fill in what these vectors are here. We want the magnitude of 143 dotted with um, 256 cross 127. Okay. And when I say the order doesn't matter, I mean that the where I sub in the vectors doesn't matter so much. Once I go to evaluate it, then the order does come become important because I have to do the cross product first because doing the cross product of two vectors returns a vector and I need to have a vector to do the dot product with. So I definitely do the cross product before I do the, the dot product. So I can work out what my cross product is here. I, J, K, uh, 2, 5, 6, 1, 2, 7, give myself another copy of I here, 2, 1, and then I can do the magnitude 1, 4, 3. Okay, so I'm going to have 1, 4, 3 dotted with whatever my cross product is here. And my cross product is going to be, let's see, 35 minus 12 is 23. 6 minus 14 is negative 8. And bring my k out front, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. All right, I do my dot product. I get 23 plus uh, 4 times negative 8 is negative 32 plus 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Okay, so I want to add all those things up. So 23 plus 32 plus negative 3 gives me negative 12. And of course, I'm taking the magnitude of this. So I don't want the negative, I just want the 12. Yeah, what did I do wrong? Is it should it be 17? Let's take a look here. 35 minus 8. 35 minus 12. Right? Yep. 23? 23 is good? All right. Thanks. Okay. And then the rest is okay. We work this out. We get 12. So, yeah, the volume there is um, just 12. Well, they don't give us any units, right? So we could just say, we could say that it's 12. Um, cubic units. Beyond that, we don't know. So, so you don't have to put that in, I don't think. I think as long as you know that that 12 represents a volume. Um, so v yeah, V equals 12, something like that. Okay. I'm more interested in whether you can do this stuff up here at this point. Okay.